this is different. Yeah, life song, vine and branches, Sunday communion night communion service. service. Amen. And you'll notice it's not live tonight. No, and that is because for the 1500th time. Because Anne was too lazy to no. start the machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because we're on holiday. Because we're on holiday. Mm -hmm. And we weren't sure we are going to be able to do it live. I know we're going to do the first Sunday down there. Lord we're willing, be, yeah. We're going to be live today. Lord willing. Um, yeah. Because we're going to be down there three Sundays, mm. and we're going to get hopefully we're going to get Rob, Pastor Rob, to do the last Sunday for us, the Sunday before we come home. So he doesn't know that yet. Well, no, he will by the time you see this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> Glory to God. We're just talking because normally on a Sunday mm -hmm. night, Ann and I would do a little bit of music while we're waiting for everybody to come on. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to do a little Praise bit of worship God. now so, while you're all coming on. We are gathered in unity tonight, joined in through the blood of the Lamb and His precious Holy Spirit, that it lives and moves and has His being, not its being, His being in all of us tonight. So let's join our hearts together and sing this song. We love you all and thank you for joining with us today. Yes. That sounds great. Love it. Hey, unity, I said, not, <laughs> not yeah, just unity. unity. <laughs> no discord. Sorry about here. that, branches. Let's do <laughs> that <ready>? again. <laughs> There's a line in the song 
giving him glory, giving, him glory. giving our God honor because he is the living word. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The way, the truth, and the life for us. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He's getting ready to roar. Branches. I was just I was just reading about that in the early revival study today. In Numbers and Balaam's prophecy, I that begins, I see him, but not now. I perceive him, Hallelujah. but it hasn't happened yet. And a star will come out of Judah. A scepter will come. And it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ being yes. coming into his kingship and ruling in his proper place. As king of all, king of kings, lord of lords. And you are a sovereign Lord tonight.
different is good. Amen. Well, you know what I forgot? What? Oh, your iPad. My iPad. Here it is. <laughs> so how is everybody tonight? <sighs> just put in the chat. Yeah, just talk amongst yourselves in the chat. What the Lord has been doing in your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, tonight, we're going to be in Romans 14. And we're going to read down to verse 13, starting at verse 1. Yikes. Mm-hmm. This sounds serious, Branches, because my mm -hmm. subtitle here is, Do Not Pass Judgment on One Another. Well, we don't live for ourselves. That's why Annie's titling this message. Mm -hmm. We won't, we don't live for ourselves. We don't live for ourselves. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables or drinks flavored coffee. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not one the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed mm. him. Who are you to pass judgment on a servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own 
mind. Mm -hmm. Port? Yes. The one who observes the day observes it in the honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in the honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in the honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, Amen. whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be mm -hmm. Lord both of the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For Remember it, that it written <clears throat> as i live says the lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to god so then each of us will give an account of himself to god therefore let us not pass judgment on one another any longer but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother yes Amen. that's verse 13. so what's going on in this church in rome anyway what is happening and I think Romans was written, you can correct me on this, it was written 25 years approximately after Paul's conversion. Sounds right. Yeah. So he's writing to explain... In the 50s. ...the gospel of Jesus. He's writing to address some of the things that were going on in, this, in the church. Mm -hmm. And there were two different groups here, okay? There were the Jews who were, who were learning to stand in the righteousness of faith and to push away the legalism, right? And then there were the Gentiles who were learning to obey God's moral laws instead of the lawlessness that they were used to, right? The paganism and, and all their practices, what they were used to doing. So if the church was going to reach both groups, then the ones who were more mature in the faith needed to help the ones who were less knowledgeable, right? About the faith and the ones who were still fearful when dealing with the, all the old forms of religion. And uh, guess what? To make matters worse, some of these new believers were actually shocked. They were shocked at what they seen some of the more mature believers doing. They, they saw these more mature believers um, doing all kinds of things that, that even as a young believer, they were like, hmm, should they be really doing that? Mm. I mean, does this sound familiar, Branches? All I can say is there's nothing new under the sun. Everything comes around in a circle, right? What happened then, it happened along the way, and right up to our day, it's all been done before and it will continue to, to be done until the Lord comes back. Amen. So Paul, he goes on to tell these Christians who were stronger in their faith to take on the weaker ones and to show them uh, to walk in a true love relationship and not just be critical of them. You know, don't, don't just sit back and criticize them because they're new believers. They don't know some things that the mature ones know, or should know. <laughs> We're to be patient with those less knowledgeable than us. And many in Rome had strong convictions about not eating meat sold in the public market, because most of them knew that this meat had come from sacrifices, right, to the pagan gods the pagan in the temples, you know. and, and they were sacrificed to demons associated with their sacrifices, right? And some of these people actually had just come out of these practices. So I think that would be the last thing they, they you know, wanted to experience. Most likely still felt the darkness and the demonic oppression. That some with there might you know sorry I didn't mean it, but there also might have been because of this lack of understanding and teaching you're talking about there may have been a superstitious belief that mm. by partaking of this meat you were taking on the spirit because that, yes, they yes. understood that yes 
that's why you ate <clears throat> it in the first place. You were you were eating uh, of the food well, of the gods before sure. the god and taking on his spirit. Mm -hmm. The demons in their practices were associated with with the sacrifices. Yeah, you know, and uh, they they didn't want any reminders of that, right? And I'm sure it, it must have brought back a lot of memories, but others had been away from it for so long, it didn't really bother them. I mean, they could eat it, and it, it, they, they, it, they didn't have a, a conscience about yeah, it, right? Were not they, could, they couldn't remember. They had the confidence that once blessed by God, it didn't have any demonic association for them, right? And as well, there were Jewish believers that only wanted meat slaughtered according to the scriptural guidelines. Levitical food laws. Levitical food, food laws, like no drinking of the blood and, you know, no hooved animals, yeah, you know. Any of the meat couldn't eat hooved animals. Just read No, acts, and certain acts. foul birds, you couldn't eat foul birds, like. That uh, plays a big part in Acts yeah. chapter 10 with Peter and, mm -hmm. the, and the, the vision he had with the yeah. blank or the sheet that was set down from heaven with all these unclean according mm -hmm. to the law of Moses. Yeah. And you know, Branches, there's a lot of us here tonight. We, we all come from different backgrounds, um, from the past. Our history is all different. And we all have different stones and different paths, you know, that, that led to our salvation. We have different stories. We, you know, so Paul is trying to get the church here to understand that what really matters is the person's motivation and his conscience. Whether we don't eat or we do eat, we have to remember we are honoring God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? We're honoring God. Paul warns the church to not judge those that are strong in the faith or the ones who are weak in their faith concerning these little things, these non I call them non-essentials, right? That th little things. It's like what we talk about, you know, the non-essentials of the foundational. Like, we're big on the foundational teachings of in the Bible, but yes. it, as far as other, should I get a tattoo? Should I, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> um, the rapture, stuff, stuff like that. And he's, he's warning the church here, just leave them alone, you know, just judge by motivation and by conscience. He says, let us no longer judge. And that doesn't mean we just sit back and we have, we have to just tolerate sin, whatever's coming down the pike. That's not what he's talking about here. Because we have to uh, live holy. And we, we don't accept bad morals. And we don't let anyone tell us otherwise either, right? Well, this passage says this, so you can't judge me, right? And for all you don't judge me people, <laughs> right, that are out there, that's not what this passage means. I think Paul is addressing specific people here, specific issues here that, that have become um, divisive in the Roman church in the church here. Well, basically what happens when you judge somebody's opinion? We, mm -hmm. are, we are definitely called to be judges as far as people's fruit goes. Then yep, how, definitely. Oh, yes. How will we know them after the Spirit? And we have to judge mm -hmm. to see whether, A, as John says, judge every spirit or, or test every spirit to see whether they be of God and, and then judge what people say, judge their fruit. Is it good fruit mm. or is it bad fruit? Because Jesus said, yeah. a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit. And right. a bad tree can't bring forth good mm -hmm. fruit. But how will you determine that unless through the discernment of the Holy Spirit you judge the fruit that you are being presented with? Like but in so, this case, the context yeah. of what Anne's talking about here, Paul's talking about people's opinions. Mm. And he's discussing whether or not to eat and special days of worship, you mm. know, and the drinking of wine, probably because people were getting drunk. Drunkenness well, was rampant were in the church. For, in the church, for oh yeah, their Eucharist service, the communion, the Lord's the Lord's table. So he, so Paul comes in and he leaves no doubt. 
you know, about what he means by all this. Do not do anything to cause your brother to sin. Amen. And Jesus will judge us all. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be judged. So let's look at the first part here. Don't do anything to cause your brother to sin. We're to have discipline over ourselves. That is a dirty word today. Especially right? self-discipline. <laughs> we're to have discipline over our flesh. So much that we are willing to sacrifice our own liberties for the sake of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And apparently the Corinthian church was having the same problem. Because if you look in 1 Corinthians 8, and we'll read 9 to 13. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Mm -hmm. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so mm -hmm. by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed the brother for whom Christ died. Thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. So y'all heard a little while back about this big Starbucks thing. It was like all over Facebook, all over TikTok and the internet and about how they're, they're into the, the paganism and all this stuff. And the symbol on the cup, you know, was, was an, a female deity and all this, you know, with the crown, whatever. Everyone thought, you know, let's, let's say, okay, let's say you thought drinking Starbucks was a sin, you know, because of their support for this godless culture. Because of my love for you, I, I would be willing to not drink Starbucks, you know, because it would cause you to stumble because of what you believe about it. Even though we don't you wouldn't think anything about it. It was just, right, you know, it right. doesn't bother your conscience. But again, it's it's loving your neighbor. It's the motivation. It's, it's yes, it's, it's making, so it's putting your, your brother above yourself. And purity is more important to me that what I can or cannot do. Paul, Paul is very, very strict with the church here. And I'm talking to the ladies right now. Yeah, I'm going to address this. And it's big time in the church. I mean, it's all over. It's like... I'm sure it's none of our branches. How we dress matters. Right, honey? Yes. Coming from a man's perspective. Yes. How you dress How we dress matters. matters. And if clothes don't matter, then why don't we all walk around naked? That would be even worse. Right? Well, it's illegal in some places to go around topless and all this stuff, right? But, I mean, if, if we dress in a way that causes our brother or our sister, it's not just brothers, sisters, little children, whatever, to sin, then we are in sin. Cover up your boobs. Oh. And don't wear t tight, tight, form-fitting, revealing. Yes pants that show everything you know and what about drinking I personally don't get all bent out of shape if someone has a drink you know yeah if it gets out of hand of course because we're but, told not to get drunk right but it's Christians. and I know this has been the topic of so many debates about what what did you know Paul mean when he told Timothy you know, have a little wine for your stomach. Like, well, I personally, yeah, I, I personally don't have, I haven't any problems with that. I, uh, I, I don't mean, drink. I haven't drank in a long time. Science tells us that, that that drinking beer or or wine aids is, in the digestion. It is very good for your stomach. But if you know that a sister or a brother doesn't feel that way, then don't drink in front of them. Yeah. Like, don't, you know, do that <laughs> and cause them 
to fall. And what about tattoos? Since we were mentioning tattoos. Well, lots of opinions about that. Yeah, all I'm going to say about that is the, the Bible doesn't, it's like a gray area, but there it does talk about it. It does. It does. It, and it, if, if you do have tattoos and don't feel it's a sin for you, okay, fine. But love your brother enough to not flaunt it. <laughs> It's one of those things in, Le- in it's, the it's book a of forbidden, Leviticus that is yeah, in, equated with um, the paganism, idolatry, the de- worshiping, the death, because the priests Rituals used to tattoo death. themselves back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's only mentioned there once, and as as a form of idolatry. It's and that's forbidden why, in, in Levitical law. It is and it isn't because it talks about because it, it's tied to paganism. It is tied to paganism. It's tied to idolatry, but mm-hmm. I don't necessarily the way it's worded. I wish you would have found that where that was in, in Leviticus because the way it's worded it is kind of like it's more of an example than anything else. Uh, I personally don't like tattoos. I personally think, uh, and again, since we're talking about opinions, and this is this is our opinion, and we can have this opinion. Um, I personally think it's like putting graffiti on the outside of a church because this is the holy temple. This is the spirit of the holy. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and you don't want, yeah. you know, that's the way I see it. But there are other people, other Christians who don't feel that way and have tattoos. That doesn't mean we, we can't have fellowship. They, they just think differently about it. And the Bible is very clear. If we cause our brother to sin, we are, we are in sin. Period. No, I don't expect so, you got to take that up with God. I don't expect people to like, have their tattoos removed because I don't like it or somebody doesn't like it in the church. But, yeah. you know, what, but don't flaunt it. But you like, can don't, cover don't. them up. If you know somebody's offended by it, you could cover You don't them. go up to someone who you know does not agree with tattoos and say, hey, man, look. Yeah, I look at my new tattoo. I man. just got a new tattoo. Wow, it's awesome. It symbolizes this and it reminds me yeah. of this and, yeah. and whatever. No, don't. Don't do that. Mm-mm. Now, yeah. I... I, I just say it's it's one of those tattoos are one of those thorny issues, and it, it it's not really a salvation or a, a issue because if you have a tattoo, unless you cause your brother to stumble, yeah, but even then, to sin, even then you don't want you don't want to sin, and that's why you'd be careful. But you personally, I'm talking about a person who personally has a tattoo. Mm-hmm. Just because you have a tattoo doesn't mean you're you're, you're now going to hell, banned from heaven, and you're going to be going mm-hmm. to hell. No, that's not what you know, the Bible doesn't teach that. Mm-hmm. This is all within the context of <clears throat> causing your brother to sin, the motivation yeah. of the heart, right? So here's a question. Why are we so defensive as believers? Don't we love God? Don't we love the whole church? Don't we love the whole body of Christ? Or do we just want, you know, do we? why do we fellowship with believers? Do we... Just want what we can get, you know, what the church can give to us. We're to be known by our love for one another. The agape love, it's, it's a sacrificial love. Sacrificial love, yes. Yeah, it's a very sacrificial love. Do we really want to do something bad enough that we're willing to cause someone else to stumble and to sin? I mean, these are some things I was thinking about. It, it's just selfish. And it lacks love. We're getting down to the brass tacks, okay? Because there's a lot of people in the church today, they say, well, I don't care. I don't care. So what? Like, that's their problem. If they don't like it, too bad. Or in the case of what Ann's talking about, what you don't want to hear mm. from people in the church is someone to come up and tell you, I don't care what you think. No one lives to himself and no one dies to himself. So each of us will give an account of himself to God. We read it. Let's turn to Moses. Moses, hey, Moses. good example. Oh, you mean in the scriptures? Yeah. Jesus. Numbers 20, verse 12. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. I thought that was a pretty harsh statement. Yes. It, it's like the After hammer fell. 
everything that Moses did for both Israel and to be God's representative, everything that Moses went through, and then in the the last straw, the last analysis, yeah. he has denied the reward. Yeah. You, you could think of, like, so many ideas of what Moses' sin was here and, and why he was punished. I think it's because of his disobedience and his uh, indiscretion, because he was disloyal. He... And, and gave a bad impression to the people of God. And he didn't place God's character before them uh, in a true light. He was charged with not being obedient to God. Yes, he had failed. He, he had faith in God. Moses obviously had faith in God. But it wasn't an issue of his faith in the power of God. He believed God. Now, you have to keep in mind that, that the two faults of disbelief and disobedience are two sides of the same coin. And they run throughout the whole scriptures. How many times have we read that? I mean, we're talking about that right now in Isaiah. You know, the disobedience and the rebellion of the people. So what was Moses' disobedience? Yeah, he struck the rock two times instead of, you know, what the Lord right. told him. Well, there, there's a sense of unbelief. In, in addition to speaking to it, I mean, but at other times God told him to use the rod, right? And he used it. So I think it was the fact that he gave the people a bad impression of God. Let's look at Psalm 106, 32 and 33. Just thought just it, it looks like you can make an argument here that Moses sinned the same sin as the people of Israel. Mm. The, the, the whole sin of the golden calf was because they did not believe God. Um, they did not believe the promise. They'd seen all these miracles and all the power of God demonstrated, and yet they still returned to idolatry. And in this one time, Moses was showing his disbelief. Um, he lost his by temper, his too. actions, by losing huh. his temper, you know. Um, and to uphold me as holy, and that this is really important, I mean, mm -hmm. because this, this applies to each and every one of us. Uh, but we're going to go to Psalm 106. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming this has something to do 32 with... 32 to 33. 32 to 33. We'll go to 32. They angered him, that being God, at the waters of Meribah, and it went ill with Moses on their account, for they made his spirit bitter, and he spoke rashly with his lips. Lost his temper. Why, what and in the process, he acted in a way that dishonored God. Moses didn't follow God before the people. Luke twelve forty eight. He didn't follow hmm. God before the people. He dishonored him. He didn't listen to the instruction of the Lord. No, he did not. Bad example. Caused them to stumble. But Luke twelve forty eight. Twelve forty eight. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive. Well, this this is the Lord talking about the servants. Mm -hmm. um, who knew his master? Let's go back to forty three so you get the whole context of this. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him to pieces and mm. put him with the unfaithful. <coughs> Sorry. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will be receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating, will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of much will be required. From him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Right. So Moses' job was to reveal to the people the character and the nature of God. He was to fear and hallow God's name before the people. He didn't do that. 
just as Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, 9. Call the Lord's Prayer. You can probably all quote this. Our Father, Our in, heaven, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. You want to read the whole thing? Done. No. That was just so, first act. What does taking the Lord's name in vain mean, Francis? It's not just using curse words or saying his name as a swear word. It's much deeper than this. It's doing a thing in his name but not honoring him with our words or with our actions. Like worshiping him with our lips but then going out into the world and doing whatever the world's doing and you know we have a pretense of god godliness but we deny the power, the power and we don't honor him his name is to be honored in us among us through us and to others to those around us just like moses what did the lord say to him you did not hallow me in the eyes of the children of israel that was his sin this was disobedience, and it was so severe, Moses wasn't even allowed to enter the promised land. It's, that got me thinking, like, wow, something like that. Something to think about. No one lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. So each of us will give an account of himself to God. Very important. Yes, we should pay attention to ourselves but in the sense that we are examining ourselves right we're examining our motives and our behavior to see if we're operating in love or we're are we being selfish we examine our heart right the I can do whatever I want mantra is big in the church mm -hmm. I've heard that so many times from believers it's rebellion rebellion in the church witchcraft in the church i can do what i want you can't tell me what to do you know who who died and made you god you know kind of thing right that's like we not only need to seek to honor the lord in our words and our actions but jesus lets us know that he is so one with us that when we honor one another, we're honoring him. We're actually honoring him. And when we sin against others, we're, we're sinning against him. Why do you think all the patriarchs like David and uh, Daniel and uh, the prayers in the Bible, Nehemiah, they, all, they always identify with the sins of others. You know, even the though sins of the nation. all the sins of the nations, they say, Lord, we have sinned against you, even though he might not have been involved you know, he might have been living a righteous and a pure life, but he identified with, with, with their sins. So when we're sinning against others, we're sinning against God. Matthew 25, 40 says this. And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. That's kind of scary when you think about it, when you really meditate on that. The issue or the problem with most Christians is that they don't live with an eternal mindset. We were talking about this mm -hmm. today. We were talking about this yeah. in it, studies. In this, yeah, when we were talking. <laughs> were we talking about talking stuff? They're in the here and now mentality. They don't have an eternal mindset. Everything's focused on the world. You know, what's going on now? Are our prayers selfish and worldly at times? I mean, we want all this earthly stuff and, and that really doesn't satisfy us anyways, right? Because once we get it, we're on to the next thing and we're on to the next thing. Yeah. It just means that there's something not in line in our own life with God's word. Do we put roots in the world instead of the heavenly things? Right. Like, are we rooted into the, so deeply rooted in the things of the world that we're not even thinking about eternity? Or as we said last week in one of those studies, do, do we only want the things that God gives us and not God himself? We only mm -hmm. want the gift and not the giver? 
what we need more it we need character more than comfort we need pers we need to persevere more than to be prosperous prosperity all the earthly goods we need godliness more than worldliness you know some would rather go on a mission trip than actually stay on the mission field you know it's just easier just to put put some money in the plate and then go home and do whatever you want than, than to actually get up and help build with your hands every day whatever makes whatever makes them look and feel good well the Holy Spirit did prophesy of such a generation right and we are living in those times yes. 2nd Timothy 3 1 and 2 actually I'm gonna read down to 5 because it's such a visible um, celebrity mentality nowadays of Christianity yeah. you know who has the biggest church who has the best worship team who has you know this ministry this program this book these songs going for them right mm -mm, that's not what it's about but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty mm -hmm. where people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy heartless unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, mm. reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness mm. but denying its power, avoid such people. Pretty hard to avoid the world when we live in it, but that's pretty well disguised most people in the world. Well, I'm addressing us tonight in in our work for God in and what he's called us to do make sure we're not seeking to honor ourselves instead of God I mean I've, I've seen this so many times and even in my own life at one point in the past you know the Lord had to deal with with me on that you know when I was just stepping out into music and ministry and everything it you know, it's, it's exciting and it's easy to get the focus off of God and to, to start thinking, well, wow, look what I'm doing. This is such a great work. Look, I led five people to the Lord. I led this person to the Lord, whatever, right? This, I healed this person. No, no, no. Reality check here. Spiritual reality check. It's not about us. Are we honoring God in what we're doing or... Are we taking the praise? Are mm -hmm. we? Do we want a reputation for ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, he, he was of no reputation. Right? So many are looking to honor themselves under the guise of doing a work for Jesus. Doing a work for God. Men shall love themselves more than God. Think about that statement right there. Put it on. Does it fit us? We need to examine our hearts and examine our words and examine our actions always, always. Are our words about us and what's good for us? Do we elevate our own thoughts and what we want and, you know, our desires, our fleshly desires? Do we elevate our own opinions? Do we exalt humans and their desires? And we want, and, and the wants, you know, of others in the worldly sense above that of the Lord. Are we elevating God? Are we elevating Jesus and his word? There's, these are things we really need to ponder on. I think everyone loves Paul. I mean, if you don't love Paul, <laughs> and I, it's most people I identify with either Paul or Peter in the Bible. When when we talk about well, who are you? Who do you think you're most like? A lot of people say Peter. You know, I'm a Peter. But I think everyone loves Paul. He's kind of like a hero, and I mean, 
look at his life. Just an ordinary man like you and I. And he was ordinary, just like you and I. And in fact, all of the people in the Bible are just like you and I. Someone that God created, that God used because they were willing to be used. You know, and they loved the Lord and all the characters written in the scripture were mm -hmm. just people like you and I. Mm -hmm. So why can't he use you? Why can't he use me? You know, why can't he use my husband? He well, used Peter. He obvious. used Paul. Paul lived his life in total surrender to Jesus. That's what it takes. That's it. Total surrender to Jesus. In fact, in Galatians 2.20, he wrote, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live mm. by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. His life wasn't his own anymore. He, was, he had been crucified with Christ, just as we are crucified with Christ. It wasn't his life anymore. He kept eternity in mind. Yeah. Always. The call of the upward prize. Yes. Path. Everywhere the he went, of the upward call people of tried to kill him, but he still preached the truth. And he wouldn't quit, and he wouldn't give in. And this is our goal. This is my goal. I don't really care what others think, think of me, but I do care what they think of Jesus. Like, you can call me whatever you want, but... When it comes to Jesus, I'm going to speak out. The, the thing I hate, it really, really grieves me and hurts me, is when I hear someone saying the Lord's name in vain. Jesus, you know, and they, they just, it's like, oh. And a lot of times I'll turn around and I'll say, oh, you know him too, huh? And they're like, what? <laughs> oh, you know him. You just said Jesus Christ. Do you know him? And that kind of opens, and usually they just say, oh, yeah, whatever. The interesting thing about that, <laughs> as I've maintained, the interesting thing about that is that the world at large uses the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as a swear word because it yeah. knows us subconsciously and the power unconsciously. Behind it. The power in that name. They you, don't use Muhammad. You never, you never hear anybody go, oh, Muhammad, or oh, Buddha. It's or Jesus Confucius. Christ. It's Jesus Christ, and it's just that word, though, that title and that name just comes out. And you, even if you're using it in vain, it's because you want to use the strongest it, expletive. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the highest of with. degradation and mocking. But it's, it, no, but there's just yeah. You're you're what you're doing when you say that is because you're expressing the your highest your emotion at its pitch. Mm -hmm. And you want you want something yeah. strong. You want a strong declaration, and the strongest declaration that a human being come against can the man that came to the world to die for you can come is to say <laughs> Jesus Christ, because yeah. they inherently know there's power in that name. Well, I came to the conclusion: you can do whatever you want, you can say whatever you want, because I know I'm not serving God because I want a mansion. I'm not serving God because I want great wealth. I, I'm not even, you know what, if I get a crown, I get a crown. We're not serving him to get crowns. That's not our motivation. We will get crowns, but we're not, that's not what keeps us going, right? We want to be in his presence. I want to be in the presence of God for eternity. That's my focus. For all of eternity. I just want to sit at the feet of Jesus. And one day, we will give an account. I will give an account to my Jesus. Each and every one of us. So, I refuse to be distracted. And I won't go back to the fear of man. Don't go back to the fear of man. If you've been delivered from that fear of man, don't go back. I mean, what can they do to us? If God be for us, who could be against us, right? That devil, Satan, is looking to destroy our lives. But we are all staying on the battlefield, on this missions trip. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow to me. And every tongue will confess to God. Romans 14, 11 to 12. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. So we need to ask ourselves some questions tonight and then we'll close. Are we being a hindrance for others? Are we causing them to fall backward into unbelief? Because we don't want this to be recorded in the God's book. He has a book that he records everything in. Mm -hmm. I read, I can't, I should have found that. I read that in the scriptures. Is it in this? Mm. In our behavior. Causing someone else who used to be addicted in a bondage. And they've been set free. Is our behavior, you know, causing them to stumble? Are we honoring the Lord in our walk, giving Him honor, giving Him glory before others? Or do we just look like the world? How do people see us as they study our lives? I mean, what, what are the pictures that we post on social media, first of all? I have been shocked. You know, when I had my old Facebook account, that I was shocked. I'm like... Isn't she a Christian? Like, why is she posting this like she's at the club or whatever? She, she dressed like... Be careful what you post and how you live. Because people are studying us. They're studying our lives. Women of God, are we dressing modest? Or are we revealing it all to everybody, just letting it all hang out? Are we keeping ourselves covered? Remember, we're the bride. We're not the whore of Babylon. Right? And I want to address the men. Yeah. On this channel and otherwise. Everywhere in the body of Christ. Are you loving your wife as Christ loved the church? Ephesians 5. Are you being Ephesians 5 husbands? Or are you in the back room at night, late at night, while your wife's sleeping, looking at pornography? Or surfing the web for stuff, dirty sexual things? I mean, come on. If you see something and it comes up, just right away, right away, get rid of it. Because you know what it, where it leads. It's a tactic of the enemy. Are you loving your wife as Christ loved the church? Would someone want to even be a Christian by watching you in how you love your wife? The marriage is a reflection of Christ and his bride. Marriage is a relationship yes. between our relationship with God. And I wrote here, I thank God for my husband. Oh, she wrote that down exactly the way I gave it to her. She didn't change <laughs> well, we a word. Had, honestly, when we first started, we had a really rough time in our marriage. But if it wasn't for the love of Christ and our submitting and making Christ the center of our relationship, we wouldn't have survived. And the growth, you know, that came through that in my husband, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt he loves me as Christ loves the church. He demonstrates this. Is he perfect? No. But I know beyond okay. a shadow of a doubt. Didn't I fold the laundry yesterday? You did, and you did there the you dishes too for me. Well, I'll be doing you... the dishes after this too. No, I'll, I'll do them. No, I'll do them. Okay. No, I'll do them. I said I would. Right. I'll do them. <laughs> no, yeah, get up makes, and help your wives. She makes a good point. That your marriage will only survive if you make Christ in the center mm -hmm. of it. It's the only way it'll survive. Do those special things for one another. You know, surprise one another by just loving each other by doing good deeds. You know, do the dishes, do the laundry, whatever. Cook dinner sometimes, husbands. 
you know, say, uh, go out for a she, while and I'll watch the kids or whatever. She's a better cook than I am. <laughs> Parents, are you training your children in God's word? Singles, are you, are you saving yourself for your spouse? Uh-oh. Not living in sin, but in purity. Be careful. It used to be back in the day you weren't allowed to go on a date unless you had your parents with you or an aunt or an chaperone. uncle or a chaperone. You know, nowadays it's like couples stay out till the wee hours of the morning and that just opens the door for temptation. These are the things that honor and hallow his name, God's name, in us, through us, among us, and those around us. No one lives to himself. One day, all will give an account of our lives to the Lord. Amen. So here's what I want to leave you with tonight. The, this thought. We need to live with an eternal mindset. Because one day, I'm going to give an account for my words, my actions, my life. Did I honor God? And stay faithful and truthful to his word. And yeah. remember what the Lord Hallow said. his name among others, you know. Remember what the Lord said about your words. That by your words you will either be justified or you will be condemned. The power of life and death is in, the, in the, tongue. the tongue. Did I seek his glory? Did I seek his honor? Or did I seek to honor myself, my own name, to make a reputation, reputation, reputation for my name? for myself and how how did we treat the body of Christ how did we treat one another those around us in the body of Christ these are definitely the last days where separation of the sheep and the goats and I don't think it's a good thing for people in the body of Christ to go around saying that we, why, why should we go to church? Why should we gather together? Like, why? I mean, I can just go online. I can just watch this online. But it's, it's important, and this, it, there's a place for it. But I just want to encourage us. If you can get together with other believers in the flesh, if you can, and I pray the Lord brings them, because it's very powerful, right? When you gather together with other believers in the flesh. Yes, it's powerful this way as well, but, you know, you can't reach out and hug someone. You can't lay hands on someone and pray for them right there and then. You can't. But there's so many disadvantages of being online, but there's great, great advantages of, as well. But I think for someone to say, ah, I ain't never going back to church. They're just all this and they're just all that. And they're criticizing and dissing the church. That's not right either. That's kind of selfish. It's individual Christianity. It, it, it just can leave you lifeless, godless. Yet we need to be careful how we're speaking about the church of Jesus. I know that church isn't a, a building, but... Where do people gather? Mostly in churches. Huh. We have an online church, but mm -hmm. that's not what she's talking about. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the online church. I'm talking about when church was church before it wasn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways, that's... It, that's what the Bible says. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves, the assembling together, of yourselves as together. Some have made a habit of doing. Yes, and we we're, the Bible also says that we need to gather together more often as we see that day approaching. Yep. We are a holy people filled with the Spirit of God. So, are we? How are we treating each other? How? Are we treating the brethren like they're holy? Are we honoring one another? Now, I'm talking about true Christians. 
those who are walking in obedience, those who who love the Lord, they love the truth, they're they're you know walking in righteousness, they're hungering and thirsting for God's truth for for the Lord. The love of God is displayed in us when we sacrifice for one another. And we demonstrate the same and we spirit put that was in Christ. The brethren and their needs above our own needs. We have to look different. We have to look different than the world. Definitely. Now, you tell me, how are we doing on that scale as far as the church? Well, let's personalize that. How am I doing? How are my actions? How are my words? How do I display Christ? to the world by loving the brethren and loving one another and hmm. for by this all men will know that you are my disciples Amen. when you love one another. know that you're you're a Christian by our love so that um, that was a strong message that's that but Paul Paul preached it pretty strong yeah the Lord Jesus preached it strong. Even stronger. He brought, it, he brought it even. And these are words that we need to heed and, yeah. and obey and practice while you're getting your emblems for right. communion. Mm -hmm. um, Thank so you, Lord Jesus. We shall give you a few Thank minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For a few for seconds. Because we know from... Us, Lord. We, we know from... Times Jesus. every Sunday that you, you you need about two or three minutes to gather our um, arms. Praise so. you, Jesus. You want to pray in there right now? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Father, strengthen our love for one another. Strengthen our love for you. Pour out your spirit in our hearts. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, change us. Mold us. Shape us, Lord, just as we sang. Lord, mold us, shape us, yes, Lord. Lord. Change our hearts to have a heart like yours, Lord, that is totally surrendered, just as Jesus. When he was in the, the garden, he said, Father, take this cup from me, but nevertheless, you know, if, if you don't, your will be done. Yes, Lord. I'm going to do your will. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord to be obedient to your truth. Lord, to lay aside every weight that besets us, Lord, to walk in humility and that spirit of repentance and humility every yes, day, Lord. Lord. To examine our own hearts, Lord. To see if we're walking in the faith. Lord, change me, Lord, tonight. See if there's any wicked way in me. Deal with my heart, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Before we even take communion. Lord, we, we examine, examine our, our hearts, hearts, Lord. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for pride. Forgive us for selfishness. Forgive us for lack of love. Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the blood of Christ. And thank you for your table, Hallelujah. Lord. The Lord's table. 1 Corinthians 11. Our familiar passages. Verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That when the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, and this was the bread of affliction that represented the bitter bondage of Israel in Egypt. He took this bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we do this and we break we break the bread remembering the sacrificial price of the redemption of our souls by the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. How his body was broken for us. Let us partake. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. 
Thank you that while you were yet we were yet sinners, you died for us. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, this being the third of the four ritual cups of the Seder feast, the cup of blessing, the cup of redemption. And he took the cup after supper, as saying to his disciples, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The Lord announcing that God was about to make a new covenant sealed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ between himself and mankind that he was sending a mediator and a great savior mm -hmm. to save us and every time that we partake of this wine every the color of blood mm -hmm. we will remember the lord we will remember what he did for us let us partake and paul says as often as you eat this bread and drink this Thank wine you, this cup Thank you, Lord. you proclaim together, all of us together, mm. in the body of Christ. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, the efficacious death of the Lord. Amen. Because he died, we are made alive. And, and we therefore, we can look with hope and with glorious excitement at the coming of our Lord. Mm. And not with trepidation and fear. Amen. Because yes, he God, is our yes, Savior yes. and he is our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well. Thank you as always for joining us. A little different tonight, as I say, this is mm -hmm. a this is gonna be a recorded message. Um the other two that we're doing on vacation will be live. Um I prefer live when it comes oh. to communion. Lord Wellen. The, yeah, when when we're able to do it, but I do prefer live um, you know, the interaction because mm -hmm. It, partaking of the sacrament um, in real time well, seems to be much yeah. much more satisfying um, knowing that we're all together and, and we're, we're speaking we're gonna be in the chat um, we'll be in the chat for mm -hmm. sure we'll be in the chat um, and we'll be with you in spirit as well yeah, so. okay. and always in my prayers always in always our in prayers. our prayers always yeah. in our prayers always in yeah. our prayers and if you have prayer requests but you're not on the platform, just email them. Email them to us at lifesong at gmail.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. Lifesong worship. Yep. Well, it'll be in the chat. So. And as Rob demonstrated, if we do this through Zoom, any of you who, would, who feels like they would like to lead communion one Sunday night, um, you, teach, you, do, you are certainly invited to do so. So if the Lord places upon your heart and you would like to do so, please let us know. Let us know. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. God bless you. We love you. We love you dearly. Uh, but as I would say, the Lord loves you better. More. more. He loves you more. So much more. He, he knows you better than we do. He, he has he is the Lord is intimate with all of us more than any one of us can be intimate with each other he knows our the secret thoughts you just have to read some of David's Psalms to know that but yeah. you're all aware of that mm. you're all aware of that so we still don't want to say goodbye mm -hmm. we don't want to still want to say even on video we don't want to mm -hmm. say goodbye but we pray that you'll be blessed uh, remember tomorrow is uh, another New Hope Monday and then followed yeah. by a truly unique, unique. Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, she's still in Adventures a, with Unique. Adventures with new, <laughs> Unique. She's still in um, the Croissant Queen. Philippines. The uh, Philippines. <laughs> yeah, she's still in the Philippines. She's still in the Philippines. <laughs> she's still in Philippines. <laughs> what are you doing in the Philippines? Yeah, what are you doing in the Philippines? <laughs> um, She's still in Philippians, and we are still in the book of Isaiah throughout this. Although next week we're going, I'm going to be, we're going to take a little side trip, and we're going to do two days of an, an old teaching that we did two years ago that I put back together again because I thought it was very good on the third chapter of the book of Psalms. Mm. Sorry? The third chapter of the book of Proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> are you sorry? Not really. Proverbs chapter 3. Anyways. So, um, and we'll be doing that. And then 
by the end of next week, we, we will be at last heading home and things will get back to normal for the next week. What is normal? Well, what is normal? I don't know. <laughs> what is normal. Anyway. Good night. God bless you. Good night. God bless.